Huh, I wonder how season four will go. Oh, your highness, I'm sure it's not that noticeable. Oh, bald, 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 bald. Oh, this is some good shit. Story opens with Disney orphaned Glimmer getting ready for her coronation. Well, trying to. Planning the party is more stressful than actually being queen. No six packs for kids. Bo is trying to keep things light, but we entered the 13 plus demographics a season and a half ago and there's just no use trying. Magic on Casta shows up to keep the plot moving. Meanwhile, Netflix still won't let them say dead. Yeah, she's just trapped, but for all intents and purposes, She's dead to these characters. I'm worried about Glimmer. Must be hard celebrating, what with Angela being gone. We get an exposition dump, more avoiding the D word. Now with her, her absence. So Honey, she's seven to 18. She can handle the concept of death. She's been fighting a literal war. She's seen worse. Oh, I guess it's different now that it's her family. Left out of the will, Casta continues to try and help. Way too extra Frosta is doing her best, but she's really watched too much anime. First mistake Glimmer picks Lady Boner Mermista to be the florist. Rip Perfuma. The horse wants to sing. Thank you, Frosta. Okay, you're in my top five now. Keep it up. Helping Adora and Bo are focusing on the wrong issues. Adora's abusive adopted mother is also in the house. Because there's nothing wrong with letting your friend's abuser walk around the castle. That won't cause them any stress or to freak out at all. Right? Salt and Earth are still bickering. Ice Pint is still being extra. A special lantern is also missing. And like everything wrong in this show, it's the horse's fault. See, even Bo can't stand him. And he's the nicest one. Cramping her style glimmer is a bit overwhelmed by it all but still walks down the aisle. Going on a ceremonial quest, Snapping Glimmer is angry at her friends who just really just suck at dealing with grief. Losing the lantern, then picking it up in a special room. Giant Worm shows up, wrecks stuff. Damn it, Glimmer, can't teleport. Why not? Because I haven't been recharging my powers! What? She cries and gives a sad speech about how everyone is just so quick to replace her mom, which is valid, but... <laughs> It's kind of necessary. Hugs Adora lets her know that they will always be there for her. Giggity Bo has this freeze frame. They go in, distract the worm. Glimmer gets her mom's power up. Worm is pacified by royalty. New Queen Glimmer ports into the party, gets a touching statue. Surprise, the backup princesses were able to come through. War Speech Glimmer hypes up her subjects. Over with the people they plan on killing, All My Falcatra meets up with Lost My Girl Kordak, who is missing his shorty, thinking and trapped to betray him when it was just the cat. Not handling it well, Hordak orders Catra to burn all of his ex's stuff. Going to check on that operation, terrible friend Catra starts yelling at best girl Scorpia for not destroying everything fast enough. Making excuses, Scorpia asks if they can bring back Entrapta. Quadrupling down, Catra continues to lie about what happened, threatening Scorpia, and again, who is the only person on your side. Also, Scorpia is hiding R2 Emily. In the Grouch's throne room, in a funk, Hordak gets a rude surprise, a redesigned Catra. Ripping out his power crystal, Hordak has to shut up and listen. Hard Dom Catra has to spell it out for him. Your dad hates you. Entrapta left you. I'm all you got. Get your act together, conquer Etheria with me, or else Daddy Palpatine will think you're as big of a failure as you actually are. I will murder you in your sleep. What? Nothing, let's do it. Next, Queen Overzealous decides to send a team back to the Crimson Waste to drag Mara's ship all the way to Bright Moon. Wrong kind of ship, Glimmer, who realizes Waterbender Miramista would be useless in the desert. So she decides the next best thing is plants? Um, I don't know. Would it winds be the most effective element in the desert? No? Not important? Okay. All king aside, it's nice to see the hippie gin arc. So, a party comprised of a puppy, bad hair, a twink, and a bear walk into the desert. What can go wrong? Well, for starters, Ironic Weakness Perfuma can't control cacti. Get it? Because they're usually so easy to manage. The horde has taken over the waste. Huntara's former lover. Everyone is in love until proven otherwise. Raises the alarm. Calls Huntress Wizard soft. She's got a complex. 
hiding from the NPCs. These two have a minor breakdown. Brainiac Bode texts his way into figuring out where the ship is. Wallflower Perfuma gets a confidence boost thanks to the mom from Stuart Little. Yeah, look it up. Launching a ship, I'm sure. Over with the evil side of the story, Bojack Catperson is still being terrible to basically a Saint Scorpia who starts flirting so you know it's someone else. Okay, this is... This is a thing that I'm seeing. Are you also seeing two of me? <gasps> oh, I have a twin. I always felt this emptiness inside and like there was someone who would just understand. Oh, this is making so much sense. Never change, Arachna baby. The fake transforms into Catra's worst enemy. Revealing their true form. Best character in season four, Double Trouble, who is willing to work for anyone provided the pay is good. The She-Ra crew attacks the base. Definitely the real Catra fights Adora. Got a gift card Huntara tries to meditate to cheer up struggling Perfuma. Cheating Perfuma realizes she just needs to control the roots, not the cacti themselves. Caging Catra Adora dips with the ship. Can't afford the actor's paycheck Huntara decides to stay behind and fight the horde. Also, Glimmer popped in for a bit. We also get the reveal that Shira was fighting Double Trouble. I'm just gonna call this ship Roxanne. Moulin Rouge? Is that too obscure? It's a song about falling in love with a prostitute. Next, cute with her hair out, Katra is having PTSD dreams about the portal. Well, good to know she has a conscience buried somewhere down there. Milking this Hordak is still bemoaning his lost love in Trapta. Yells at Katra. Psych, it's Double Trouble again. Devious Katra proposes a plan. Definitely failed upwards Hordak listens. The Ditching Glimmer friends go to a party. Has a type Adora ogles at them muscles. Leaves. Everyone gets captured. Bo does his whole inspiration thing, while Catra does her being salty thing. The heroes win, except they didn't because this is all ploy to get Glitter Overload Double Trouble in as a spy. The horse was in this episode. See, honestly, he's at his best here, in agony. Only took four seasons, but extra princesses Natas and Spinarella finally get an important role in the episode. Which is okay, it's not like they're in the opening and all the promotional materials, right? Oh, they are? Well, whatever then. They just spend the whole episode doing the Gimli Legolas thing about counting their kills. Sideline Glimmer is finally back in the story for real, and is sick of leading her army into ambushes. <laughs> Arena! Sassy best friend Double Trouble gives enjoying this Catra all the deets. They would be great friends if this wasn't all about the money. Playing in her yard, Glimmer shows off how OP she's gotten, finds obviously evil Shadow Weaver in the garden, because she can just go anywhere she wants. Third time's a charm, Shadow Weaver begins worming her way into dumbass Glimmer's life. Okay, yes, that was harsh. But in my defense, it's f***ing Shadow Weaver. Should be dead Bo gets hurt on a mission. She-Ra T-poses to heal him. Glimmer realizes she has to do something. God damn it, Glimmer. This is Catra all over again. So, roll 20 for charisma. Shadow is teaching Glimmer magic now. Because I don't know. F*** her aunt, I guess. Glimmer is told to use She-Ra as bait and to attack the base herself. Which she does. Because if she was going to start listening to her elders, I guess this would be the one to start with. Overpowered Glimmer cleans house. What did you expect? Catra decides to blow everything up. Convenient teleporter gets the bomb out of the way. Catra gets imprisoned, but Double Trouble isn't gonna let their sugar mama die like that. There's a bunch of stuff with a canonically married couple, but if the show isn't going to put in the effort to talk about them, neither will I. Reasonably Angry Adore doesn't like being treated as bait instead of a friend. In it to win a glimmer justifies it because victory, which isn't the issue. It's trust. Drops a shadow bomb on abusive victim Adora. Shadow Weaver's teaching you? Guys, we won today and no one else got hurt. That's what counts. Glimmer, I don't know. Now, I'm gonna go raid the kitchen in celebration. Glimmer, I'll bring back some cake. Did I mention this is the season where Glimmer is at her absolute worst? In character, yes. Makes sense for the story, yeah. Enjoyable? Hell no. I'm too busy screaming at my screen to enjoy anything. Next we get a light episode where What's in the Box Adora asks Sketchy Light Hope about the weapon. The AI has to do a hard reboot. Losing the stick up her ass, substitute teacher to Light Hope will answer any of Adora's questions. But she also doesn't know those answers, and so they're back to square one. Things are going haywire, spiders, water. Get some memories of Mara and Light Hope. They're sweet. I like this new Light Hope. Once you balance the planet, all will become clear. And she's back. Lots of shadows, so beware. In the B plot, we're talking about the backup friends. <laughs> Wait, we're actually gonna talk about them? Cool. We can finally confirm if Rogelio and Kyle are gay or not. No? Not gonna even hint at it in the slightest? Eh, that's fine, I don't really care. Glad they're getting more screen time, though. 
So the B team are out doing some deliveries when acid pollen starts eating at their car, cutting the power. They try and fail to fix it, but again, it's acid pollen. So they just have to run into the back. Too nice for this job, Kyle is pumped. He just wants to hang out with his friends, who aren't impressed. Jerk from kindergarten, Katra, FaceTimes them to tell him to hurry up. Man, she just needs to chill out. Jibber Shohelio can only speak lizard, and no one can understand him. You know, that actually kind of sucks for him. They Rochambeau decide who dies to fix the car. Surprisingly, an optimist Kyle tries to keep things light. Overshadowed Lonnie questions why she even bothers being their leader. Alleged gay croc Rogelio tries to play cutball, but actually good at something Kyle has other ideas. Inspiration time, Kyle tries to remind them how they're all like family. Then reality check Lonnie comes in to smack that shit down. <laughs> you want to know what we really are? We're expendable. Catra doesn't care about us. Adora left us. Everything they taught us in the Horde about loyalty is meaningless. It's everyone for themselves. This is how you write background characters. Take notes, JJ. Has my respect Kyle, suffers through the burns, fixing the car, passes out, admitting they care gay croc and bottom heavy, rush out, rescuing their MVP, and making it back to the shitty Horde. But they have each other, and they won't ever lose that. Next is a Scorpio episode. Thank God. This, this is okay. Scorpia is trying to cope with being a nice girl in an evil war machine. She also has gay parents. Wow, a lot of gay parents, but not a lot of confirmed gay characters. Funny that. Burnt out Hordak can't complete his project without his partner's notes. Adderall obsessed Katra needs some sleep but helper Scorpia brought her some tea instead. Stressed out Catra delegates finding and trapped his recordings to Scorpia. Probably because she feels so guilty about the whole thing. Abusive relationship Scorpia is making excuses for Catra to her friends. No, no, you're wrong. Catra is under a lot of pressure and maybe she just... <laughs> when are you gonna wake up? Well said, bottom heavy. Looking for the recorder in the Black Garnet room. Royalty Scorpia laments how she is supposed to have powers, but doesn't. Literally R2-D2, Emily, plays a recording of better times. Eureka Scorpia realizes that the recordings are in Emily, but they can't get them out without killing the poor little robot. Hiding out in her family's old digs, we learn her grandpa surrendered to the Horde. Bullshit! Apologist Scorpia says she'll tell Katja and her alley cat will understand. Playing the date. I don't care what it takes! We are opening that portal! Now! No! I won't! I need to tell Hordak he'll understand! Her Can't keep doing this, Scorpia realizes Katja might be a bad person. But because Scorpia is such an amazing person, she gives Katja one more chance to do the right thing. Lying that this was the recording and that she broke it. Bad friend Katra screams and yells at her last friend on the planet. You're a bad friend. And emancipated Scorpia leaves. Nothing left, Katra screams at Hordak to man the fuck up and that they, oh sorry, he doesn't need anyone else to be great. And this works. Glimmer and her friends are having issues. Blames herself Adora is being overprotective. Basically, Katra now Glimmer is responding horribly. Their friendship is fraying, but there's blame on both sides, right? Not really. Adora, you just have trouble communicating. Glimmer, you're just being a bitch. She just wants to help you. Next episode is a whodunit where the group tries to figure out who the spy is. Best girl Mermista is the main detective. Don't care why? I'm just glad we see more of her. It's time to interrogate the castle. How are you doing that? I practice at home. She's fun. Glimmer and Adora are still pissy at each other, interrogating the castle to find out who's a spy. Double trouble. The obvious suspect is still chilling in her garden. She's always been paranoid like this, you know. Stop gaslighting her. <laughs> Laugh at her abuse. Glimmer is letting Shadow walk around unguarded now. Glimmer, you're making this really hard not to slap you. Flee? Yes, seriously. What has she done other than help us? Do you really want me to answer that? Dora, please explain to Glimmer how terrible and emotionally scarred you are from Shadow. Make her understand, or I might explode. Everyone is telling their stories. 
The communications board gets broken. Things are tense. Everyone is blaming each other. Look at what she's doing to you. Shadow Weaver just wants power and you are listening to her. Oh, what? Are you jealous because you aren't Shadow Weaver's favorite anymore? Double Trouble, aka Flutterina, gets caught. Turns out the whole argument was fake. Too bad they meant every word of it. Likeable Lizard Double Trouble reveals that the Horde has already carried out their plans. Destroying Mermissa's kingdom, seeing the wham shot for themselves, justifying the end's glimmer is already gearing up to do something drastic because of this. Also, we get an end credit scene of Horde Prime. Keep it going. Thanks for doing nothing, jackass. Things are looking incredibly bleak. People are getting hurt. The Horde is winning. Poor Bo is bending over backwards to be positive and keep people's spirits up. These two still can't get their act together. Bad Rap Seahawk takes Bo for a boy's night out. Singing is involved. The song kinda sucks, but he's trying, dammit. Switch to Tequila Bo, starts feeling it, then gets captured. Captain Dumb Juice over here wants to fake a kidnapping to shake Mermista out of her ice cream and bathwater induced funk. But this is a real kidnapping, and the girls don't know where they are. All Seahawk can do is squawk at a seagull for help. Ugh, are you two gonna fight again? Whatever. Mista, I love you. Boys get sold to the Horde. We meet warning signs Octavia, who lost an eye to Catcher when the kitten was six. Break the cutie bow finally has had enough of being the upbeat, friendly guy all the time. And I get that it's hard being friends sometimes. You gotta work at it. So why am I always the only one who's willing to work at it? Can you say that louder for the pink one in the back? That worked? But hold on, let me dial this scene back a minute. Why are you blaming this all on me? It is not my fault that Selenius fell, but the Rebellion's in a worse place than ever since you showed up! I'm trying my best. Why can't you see that? Well, maybe your best isn't good enough. If it was, my mother would still be here! Glor, <sighs> shut the fuck up. Dead parents are not an excuse for being an asshole. <sighs> Above all the angst for Mista shows up to save the day, sings a song, but this one's actually good. I'm so over this dynamic Adore and Glimmer, get along to fight, then go right back to the same thing. Original angsty teen catcher realizes Scorpia's gone. I mean, she realized after a day or two, so... Yeah, she still is kind of shitty. Next episode is both very simple and very complicated. Still heard Adora goes to find the weapon Mara was talking about. Something about mental health Raz is the key to finding it. The horse gets one good line. Swiftwind, what are you doing here? Oh, I visit Raz all the time. You gotta check up on old ladies alone in the woods. Come on, Adora, have a heart. It's revealed that part of the reason why Raz is so off is that she doesn't experience time linearly. She can be in the past, but her mind is in the present, or vice versa. In the past with not crazy about the blonde hair Mara, Raz teaches her about what it really means to be She-Ra. The two become friends, even though Raz constantly calls her Adora. In the present, Raz thinks that she's with Mara, and they're going to bake pies together. Eventually, the past meets present, Adora uses the missing memory crystal. It's an Ezio Desmond moment, where these two can kind of communicate with one another, because... Don't worry about it. Martyr Mara reveals the weapon is at the heart of Etheria, and using it will destroy the planet. Guilty Spark Light Hope is trying to set off no matter the cost, and it's up to Adora to keep that from happening, so no pressure. After that great episode, we open with my two biggest headaches in the season. Poor Choices Glimmer is struggling with a truth spell. Milking It DT is having a blast. Stepping on Glimmer's toes, Adora calls an emergency meeting to tell everyone what she's discovered. Shadow is also there and tells them that they should harness the power because that's what she would do. Glimmer, care to disappoint me even further? What if there was a way to channel that magic ourselves? Damn. <sighs> I'm too tired to care anymore. Light of my life Scorpia shows up. The princess attack. Accidents happen. Sweetheart Scorpia asks for help saving Entrapta. Everyone is game to save Entrapta, hoping she can disable the weapon. Except... Now, I want to summarize what happens next, but I am tired of editing out all my F-bombs. But I'll just cut right to the chase. Politician Glimmer talks a lot about things she knows nothing about tries to leverage her connection to Bo to get him to join her. No, you weren't there. We need Entrapta. We need to disable the weapon. 
Why can't you trust me in this? Because you're wrong! Oh, thank God. Whew. I will have that on repeat to help me sleep tonight. New Leaf Scorpia bonds with Little Miss Mayhem Frosta. They have to sneak out of the castle because, damn it, Glimmer. All Alone Catra is having a meltdown. Dark Magic Glimmer finally gets that truth spell working. Whinging Glimmer whinges some more. Then goes to meet Kill Them All Light Hope. Because Glimmer can't make a good decision to save her life this season. Entrapta Rescue Operation arrives on Beast Island. Meet Glimmer's dad, Micah, who, yes, is alive. No surprise. Stuck on Tinnitus Island, the place emits a frequency that makes you depressed, then devours you. Second Wind Adora shakes out of it. Micah recovers from finding out his wife is dead. Giant Robot appears, carrying everyone's favorite 30-ish man-child. Also, Glimmer is getting played. Sad about her ex, Entrapta doesn't like talking about Hordak, but perks up because science. Info Dump and Traptor explains what I thought was obvious. They need all the princesses to get the weapon to work. she is the key, but it does turn out the sword is actually meant to control she not help her. So once again, Adora is, on her own, being forced to do something she doesn't want. Socially awkward, Entrapta would rather stay with her technology than struggle to make friends in the outside world. Male Katara tries to give her a pep talk. That fails. She does break up though when she finds out they have a spaceship. Over with the Horde. Oh, she is desperate Katra, tries to hang out with her backup friends, but is too busy posturing and being insecure to have a normal conversation. The man, Kyle, defends Lonnie from feel anything Katra, reminding her they used to be friends. Not suspicious at all, Double Trouble is suddenly free, and tells Katra Bright Moon is abandoned. So go attack it. Hordak and Katra have a moment, finally coming to respect and value each other, then the fabulous Double Trouble drops the E-bomb, revealing that Katra lied about Entrapta, and him being single is her fault. Glimmer finally disagrees with Shadow on something. Too little, too late, Glim Glim. You're already dead to me. Going to best person, Scorpia. Glimmer decides to make her a princess because that's how she's going to destroy the world. I mean, save it. One smart move, Glimmer hired Double Trouble to trick the Horde, and she ends up leaving as soon as her dad shows up, who finds Yzma lounging on the throne. Never a good sign. Good Hug Scorpio runs into the healthiest friendship in this show, Kyle, Lonnie, and Rogelio, who are ditching the Horde because of course they are. Getting to the Black Garnet, Trouble Connecting Scorpia gets a pep talk from Glimmer. Two things she's done right this season. New Power Scorpia pulls it off. Congrats, you doomed them all. Survivor Catra is running away from Cyborg Vampire Knockoff Hordak. Slinging Mud Catra mocks him for being obsessed with getting Prime's approval. If your father really wanted you home, he would have let you return by now. World or no world. But in his eyes, you are a failure and a disgrace to the Horde. First person to name the show and character I'm quoting gets a love from me. Bite hits the home stretch. Boom goes the dynamite Catra. Well. Pull the plug Catra incapacitates Hordak. DT shows up, who delivers the mother of all reasons you suck speeches. And it's glorious. Still love Catra, but she needs to suffer if her redemption arc is gonna be believable and she needs to get called out on all of her faults. Smug Glimmer shows up to gloat and to take Catra in, but whoops, the heart of a theory activating is a bad thing. Who could have predicted this? Everyone who wasn't Glimmer. I f***ed up Glimmer tries to fix her mistake, which makes her better than Catra, who just doubled down on it. Taking over Light Hope brings the plant out of the pocket dimension, tries to force Adora to fire the weapon, resisting. Both the original Light Hope and Adora defy their programming. she shatters her sword and kills Light Hope, who accepts her fate to save the world Mara protected, which is now doomed, cause daddy's here. Teleporting Hordak and Glimmer to his throne room, white. Supremacist Prime is here. Love the design. Sleek where Hordak is bulky, very fabulous. Remember when I made the Hordak give the whole Palpatine, I'm Palpatine, you're Vader speech? Well, basically Hordak was just copying what this grade A villain would yell at him. So Hordak gets put back to factory settings and Prime is about to destroy Etheria. He doesn't want the galaxy to know that one of his malfunctioning clones can fuck up. 
He's a narcissist like that. Smooth talker Katra pops up to tell him about the weapon, convincing White Dreads to let them all live, for now. Adora is without a sword, Bo was sidelined the entire finale, and these two fuckups are stuck together. This was by far the most overloaded, angsty season of She-Ra I've ever seen. Uh, so you hate it? I f loved it. Can't wait for season 5. If you guys like the video, do all that crap, but you better subscribe now and lock in, Sarcasta fans. Because next week, at your request, I'm going to talk about the show with one of the most extreme fandoms I've ever seen. Hey! Steven Universe is... Impressive.